This time I tried Creality Ender 5S1. Interface looks nice, there are all the things you need, except option to turn off annoying touch sound. Ender 5 S1 comes with the CR touch leveling sensor. There are two options for leveling, manual and automatic. Manual leveling works the same as usual, when you need to level 4 corners by rotating the knobs under the bed. The max heat the bed stamp is up to 110 degrees. Second one is the automatic. It seems to work fine, I only leveled the bed once during the testing. You can print from SD card or use smart kit which I will try later. This printer have filament sensor and button tube between the extruder. Preheating time for default temperature for PLA takes about 3 minutes. All metal extruder can handle up to 300 degrees temp. First, I will print pre sliced models from the SD card. The build quality looks nice, no 3D printed parts from Creality. Lots of settings to change during printing. Frame is strong and have two handles which makes moving this printer very easy. X axis has double belts. Cooling fan is installed on the back side of the extruder. Under the bed is insulation and four big knobs for leveling. First print was done and it was time to take it off the bed, but it turned out to be a mission impossible. Bending the flex plate it should be coming off easily, but it didn't work. So I tried some more and after hard work it came loose. C height was off, the off and after I changed it, removing the parts went much easier. Power consumption when preheating is about 370 watts and during the printing is between 60 to 240 watts. One thing I usually measure is the noise level TD printers make. This one is about average making 45 to 50 decibels. Heat bed measurements are not 100% accurate, but it will show differences in different points. Bed temp is set to 60 degrees. Differences are not big. In the middle is the temp little higher, but it's not a problem. It's usually higher in the middle. Ender 5 S1 has resume printing function when filament runs out. So I tested it if it works. Filament ran out and printer paused and X and Y axis went to the home position. I loaded filament and I hit continue. After printer hit it to print temp, it started printing again. It's working as it should. This printer also has one more resume printing function. It should work when power goes out. I unplugged the printer to make a power failure. Then I plugged it back and I hit the continue. After that all axes homed. Then printer started to heat up and when it was done it continued printing. The place you can see the string poking out is when filament ran out and the upper line is power failure. First one is almost invisible and the second one isn't that good. It's probably caused by C axis homing during resuming. 
When filament ran out was, it home the only X and Y axis and layer line is fine. Creality sent me SmartKit 2.0 to try it out. SmartKit comes almost with all you need, except power adapter. It should be included because without it you can't use it. SmartKit works same as Octoprint with Raspberry Pi and camera. SmartKit uses Creality Cloud app. Setup is very easy and it takes little time. Setting up the app takes little more, more time if you don't have app account already. If you place the camera, be sure your printer doesn't hit it. Info how to set up the smart kit is in the manual and also available on Creality website. In the app you can search and slice models and control your printer. Remote printing and real-time monitor your printer. You can also record the main time lapses, but for time lapses I would use different camera. The quality isn't good for that. For monitoring and remote control it's good. I also updated the smart kit that I didn't find any place where I can change camera settings. I also tried different lights but it didn't make any difference. You can monitor your printer from anywhere, but I don't recommend to leave working 3D printer alone. Ender 5 S1 has strong frame, good cooling and direct drive extruder, which can handle fast printing up to 250mm per second. I printed test cubes with uh, three different speeds and they all are with same quality. Filament is quality PLA. Layer lines are consistent and the overall quality is very good. I use default print settings. Top of the cube could be better, but it can be fixed when using less flow on the top layers. ABS cube overall quality is good. If you want more consistent temps and less noise, you can get acrylic enclosure for Ender 5S1. TPU printed very nice. PTG also nice. The 3D Benji came out very good. Almost no stringing, layer lines consistent, no breaching or overhang problems. The frog overall good, but the front isn't the best. Maybe the print speed was too much for this model. Speed was 150 mm per second. Owl is printing using SmartKit, slicing and remote printing. Very nice results. I mostly like the back of the Owl uh, as perfect layer lines. Rabbit is precise model from SD card, nothing bad to say. This box printed fine except the hinge part which came off the bed and when I noticed it I didn't want to stop the print. And again Flexi Factory is done a great job making this model. Simple waste printed with waste mode. First two or three times I tried to print it with waste mode I had problems with blobs and seam. Started fine but then it started to make the seam with waste mode. After I disabled resume printing blobs gone but see problem stayed. But after I used Pro Prusa slicer not reality one I got uh, it right and resume printing was enabled also. Also model designed by a flexi factory. Printed fine, but one leg didn't stick to the bed and kangaroo lost her leg. I maybe didn't clean the bed sheet enough and it came loose because that. Things I don't like is the power cable position. It sticks out to the side and it's in way. It could be coming out from the back maybe next to the bed cable. The bottom tube could be fixed with the coupler because it comes loose very easily when you change filament. The cable is a little bit in the way of the handle. Screen touch sound annoying and no option to turn it off. Filament holder not rolling like Ender 3 S1 Pro has. But there are much more things I like. 
the CR touch and cooling fans are placed so that they are not blocking the view of the nozzle. Overall cable management is good. Professional look and good strong build frame and they are no 3D printed parts.